Well, I, I've been thinking about um, working with the OAE. I, in 2005, we did the first John Passion in Aldborough. Um, and I was realising that some of the people seeing um, uh, in this project were probably still at primary school. Um, and it's, it's just been this incredible journey that we, we, we keep sort of... It's it, because it, you need to go back to it again and again. And it, it reminded me, um, in the first programme that I um, wrote a programme note for, we used the T.S. Eliot's the little getting quotes of uh, um, we shall not cease from exploration and the end of our exploring will be to arrive where we started and know the place for the first time. And essentially that's what this project is all about, is we never know this piece well enough. So it's always about sort of re imagining it, re rethinking about it, re just looking at it again. And to be able to do it um, you know, in this new context, in this amazing place, uh, with, with just incredible colleagues. And in the middle of this uh, terrible year, which has you know, affected everybody so badly, you know, musicians in particular. So um, it couldn't have been more special to, to do something like that. So, um, I mean, the kind of, it's sort of, we had an amazing meeting, which uh, we weren't going to now as to how, how we know one another. But, but somehow, you know, things come together and it's, and it's the right moment to do, yeah. to do something together. What, what was your experience of putting those texts in the middle of this piece? Is it? David is my favourite character in the Bible. And I believe the Psalm 22 was written by him. And he's my favourite character in the Bible because he's flawed. And his flaws are not particularly hidden. And he's not afraid to complain. And he's not afraid to be angry. Not only at his enemies, but at God. You know, which is rare in the Bible, I think. And I loved reading this Psalm 22 because it, it, it's, it's, so, it's sort of a, a prophecy in a way. Yeah. Not only to suffering, but also to, to faith in, in difficult times. And also to the beautiful imagery of, of hope that bad situations are not going to last forever. But what is actual is actual only for one time and only for one place. I rejoice that things are as they are, and I renounce the blessed face and renounce the voice because I cannot hope to turn again. The T.S. Eliot is it's a very elegant parent speaking to you, telling you to sort of sit still, to count the seconds, to remember your life. And I think that in this past year, whether we like it or not, we've been forced to experience things, for better and for worse. And what I, I love about having texts of that quality as a sort of sermon element in the passion is that it, it does focus our attention even more on the words, you know, that, that we really have to you know, to, um, uh, teach us to care and not to care, teach us to sit still. Um, you know, because I do not hope to turn again, because I do not hope, because I do not hope to turn. These, these, these lines which have an incantatory and a sort of musical sort of value in themselves really sort of focus and attention on, on what it is we're trying to do in the passion. Exactly. When I started reading it out loud, you hear the music of it. Mm. And, and you sort of see how it's, it's beautifully married to the Bible. Mm. And Grant, we met doing something in another theatre, uh, doing Samuel Beckett. Um, and I was just so pleased that you agreed to do this. And I know that it's meant a huge amount to, to Crispin and the team uh, of, of the, t you know, the tech side of, of OAE because they've learned so much and it's, it's been you know, a real pleasure and a privilege to, to work with somebody who's done so much um, in film work with, with lots of great groups and, and stuff. Um, I mean, I'm delighted you said yes <laughs> because it sort of makes, you know, it, it transforms it. So, how has it been? It's been a joy. I mean, I, I, I wonder what I've been able to contribute, really, because they're so 
unbelievably honest. Um, as an organisation who are making their own imagery of their work, it's just unbelievable. So I feel kind of like, well, I don't know that much, but maybe a little bit of this, a little bit of that. No, it's been wonderful. Um, and also taking, you know, I, taking my cues from you I mean everything I've, I've thought about this has, has come from a conversation with you a conversation with Crispin and, and, and taking what skills they have here already which are kind of phenomenal um, I don't know what to say really no. I don't, I don't. <laughs> and this what about the space you know, I mean it is an amazing building to, to work in yeah. um, I, I, I'd been to some fences in here before it burnt down um, and to see it like this, they've done yeah. an amazing job, you know, putting putting a roof back on, um, and it is really beautiful. Yeah, and what, what's what's was unexpected and wonderful. I mean, your your, I mean, as much as a brief there was, as you wanted this this to be, the sense of people coming together, and rather than it being a performance out, a performance that worked between all the participants yeah. and that so therefore the art and any, any drama or any, was between people the, the yeah. eye lines and the gestures and the turns and everything so that's what I've yeah. kind of tried to concentrate on and what's been really interesting is that this building has a kind of skin quality to yeah. it. I mean you, you feel like you're inside some sort of natural body yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's been really lovely looking at the shots where there are these bodies working in, and the whole background feels like a, sli a slightly ruined body, which is containing everything, yeah. and that's, that's been really lovely to work with. It's like a Lucian Freud painting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. just be beautiful paintings behind people that in fact yeah. are just ruined. Yeah, story. Mm. Yeah, and yeah, story history, and history, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it, it, we come back to this piece and we've got to make sense of it for this time and for where for this place you know which is you know, again T.S. Eliot um, and uh, you know it, it, we're, we're doing it right now we've got to sort of find our reason for it to sort of exist again and, and for the retelling this story and it is about suffering I mean it's, it, it, that is essentially passion it comes from, the root of it comes from from, from Latin meaning suffering and <clears throat> and the idea that the community comes to, together to sort of make some sort of sense in, in, in the way you know we talked about, um, and I think that has has been remarkable. The, sort of the fact that everybody, every single member, every person who's been in this room has has really sort of been part of it fully, you know, so one hundred percent that um, it's it's sort of transformative for the So. I loved yeah. it. Yeah, me too. Everyone was just so incredible. Yeah. Especially.